So in this video, I'm going to talk about lexicographic order, which is a way of representing program execution order with vectors that's very important for compiler optimization techniques like polyhedral optimization, where you try to use the machinery of linear algebra to uh, manipulate and reorder and optimize programs. So imagine we've got a really simple program, like for i and 0 to 3 inclusive, we do this statement called p, which makes the array value ai equal to the array value bi plus 1, and just ignore what ai and bi are. How do we represent uh, this program's execution order? And since we're just talking about the order to simplify things and abbreviate things, I'm just going to abbreviate this, the statement in the i iteration of the loop as pi. And a very straightforward way for this one-dimensional loop is to assign statements to points on a number line. And then we'll say pi happens before pj if and only if i is less than j. So we can think of the execution trace of this for loop if time goes from left to right as executing statement p0, then statement p1, then statement p2, then statement p3. And if we think of each of these instances of statements as points on a number line, uh, then statement 0 happens before statement 1, statement 1 before statement 2, statement 2 before statement 3, and good old-fashioned uh, comparison of numbers on the number line can be used to uh, represent these statements. So basically a single integer can represent each instance of a statement, and uh, comparison of integers using less than can represent the order on statements. And that's so obvious that it's almost confusing to spell it out, um, but it's an important thing to say explicitly because when we get to multidimensional loopness, the situation gets a little more complicated. So what if you have something like for i in 1 to 4, for j in 1 to 3, do statement pi comma j. So in this case, by analogy to the 1D case, it's probably intuitively obvious that we could represent uh, statements in the program by two-dimensional vectors. So for example, if this is the i-axis and this is the j-axis, uh, the first uh, statement in this loop would be statement 1, 1. And then the next statement would be 1, 2, which is here, and then 1, 3, and then we'd go to 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and so on. So now in this case, pij happens before pjk if and only if what? There isn't one number that we can compare to another number here because we're dealing with 2D vectors. And uh, putting a total order on points in two-dimensional space, um, you might know from math class, is a little bit trickier than in 1D. So how are we going to do this? Well, the idea, the intuition behind the idea is to think of the different dimensions as different units of time. So you can kind of think of, for example, i as representing hours and j as representing minutes, if you like. And then we'll impose an ordering or represent the order of events in this program using what's called lexicographic order. So if you just go back and think about the order in which things happen in this loop nest, we do statement i equals 1, j equals 1. Then we do the next iteration of the inner loop, which will be i equals 1, j equals 2 then i equals 1j equals 3, then we'll be done with the inner loop, we'll go back to the next iteration of the outer loop, and i will become 2, and then we'll repeat the process. So for example, if we uh, think of i and j as hours and minutes, we might say, for example, the point 1, 2, 3 hours, if the outer loop is hours, and 1 minute, which is right here, um, is a longer time, or is before, one, two hours, and one, two, three minutes, because three hours is greater than two hours. And so we don't even have to look at the minutes. We know that uh, three is greater than two, and we're done. We know that uh, this point comes after this point in time. And we write this with this little double greater than sign. We'll say three comma one is double greater than two comma three, which means lexicographically greater than. Similarly, the point uh, three comma one, which you can think of as outer loop iteration 3, inner loop iteration 1, or if you want to, as 3 hours and 1 minutes, is a shorter time than 3 hours and 2 minutes, which would be this middle point here. And so this middle point comes after uh, this first point because 3 hours is equal to 3 hours, so the first components are the same, uh, but 2 minutes is larger than 1 minute, uh, so uh, 1 is less than 2, which means that 3 comma 1 is lexicographically less than 3 comma 2. And if you were to flesh out this order and uh, for each of these points draw an arrow to the lexicographically next point in the iteration domain of this uh, uh, set of loops, then what you would see is this drawing, which is exactly the execution trace we'd expect. Uh, you know, i equals 1, j equals 1, i equals 1, j equals 2, i equals 1, j equals 3, then we wrap, get out of the inner loop nest, we go to the next iteration of the outer loop nest, and we get to uh, i equals 2, uh, j equals 1, then i equals 2, j equals 2, then i equals 2, j equals 3. In algebraic form, we can write this as that um, the instance of the statement a1, a2, so now instead of representing uh, instances of statements in the program with a single number, we represent them with a vector in 2D. So a1, a2 is lexicographically greater than b1, b2. 
if and only if a1 is greater than b1, or a1 is equal to b1, so they're in the same uh, outer loop iteration, and a2 is greater than b2. And now we can say that the uh, statement, say, pa1a2 happens after the statement b1, you know, pb1b2, if and only if this condition is true. And this actually works for multidimensional loop nests. So in general, if we have, uh, you know, an n-dimensional loop nest, um, a statements can be represented by n-dimensional vectors, and the n-dimensional vector a1 through an is lexicographically greater than b1 through bn, if and only if there's some j, there's some index into the vector such that the subvector, I should actually say some j uh, less than n, right, um, such that a1 through a2, uh, or less than or equal to n, uh, if a1 a2 to j minus 1 equals b1 to b2 to j minus 1, so basically if you just chop off the, uh, the last n minus uh, j elements, or n minus j minus 1 elements, and compare them, uh, and then compare the left-hand side, they're equal, and aj is greater than bj. So basically, they're completely equal up to some point, and then there's an index in a that's larger than bj at the end of the equality. And actually, using this multidimensional formulation, somewhat unintuitively, we can give timestamps to arbitrary for-loop programs. So we can actually give timestamps to arbitrary to, pro to uh, statements in arbitrary sequences of for-loops rather than just individual loop nests by adding extra components that represent uh, outer loops. So for example, if we have a program for i in 1 to 4, and then for j in 1 to 3, pij, the same program we just looked at, and then we add on uh, another second outer uh, loop nest, which says for m in 1 to 4, do statement c instance m, then we can say that uh, statement pij happens at time 0 comma i comma j, and cm happens at time 1 comma m comma 0, where this 0 is just kind of a padding factor to make sure that the output spaces all have the same dimension. And then these constant values in the uh, schedules correspond to the position in the program text, and then uh, these other dimensions correspond to positions inside of inner loop nests. And you can actually think of this uh, as basically representing the program as, as having a larger outer loop with two iterations, and an if statement that guards that saying, if we're at outer iteration zero, do this loop nest. If we're at outer iteration one, do this loop nest. So this is a nice way to give uh, timestamps or vectors to every single uh, statement in a program made up of for loops. Uh, it's the beginning of pretty much all polyhedral analysis, and this order, lexicographic order, is a very important basic tool to understand if you're going to use polyhedral analysis. So hopefully that was hopeful, helpful, and uh, if it was, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.